guys welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be kind of like my collective review of the Zoeva brand as always guys I'm going to put timestamps below because I'm going to cover um, some of the brushes I have and I'm going to cover all of the eyeshadow palettes and blush highlighter contour things like that that I have I know I don't ever have to apologize for you know life happening but I do want to say uh, I'm sorry for my long absence it's been about three weeks maybe even more now since I have filmed um, I've just been so tired with work and just like you guys know you know work comes up and balancing personal life and everything else and YouTube has added work on top of that stuff for me so as much as I like doing it I'm never gonna push myself to do videos if I don't want to or if I'm really tired because I can be a cranky bitch if I don't get some sleep <laughs> so and believe it or not this is not the cranky bitch me it gets worse um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I've been trying to kind of let my natural hair texture come back out. I was always, I've been air drying my hair for almost two years now. I started getting um, Brazilian blowouts that was helping smooth my hair. And I guess I never really considered my hair to be, I know some people get really offended if you have wavy hair and you call your hair curly hair, but anything that's not straight, I call curly. <laughs> I get my hair color done tomorrow. So I have my extensions out right now and I just, plopped my hair on top of my head. Again, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I've been trying all of these different hair cocktails of products. I styled my hair a little differently with the products. Like I've been trying different cocktails like with gel, no gel, leave-in, no leave-in, um, just to see how like my wave or texture comes out more. And I ended up looking like Martha Washington yesterday. So that was a big fail. <laughs> I'm learning as I go. My hair is pretty fine. Um, my hair comes down to about right here right now, but my hair is just baby fine. Um, the ends of it, especially because this part is still dealing with when I used to wear Great Lengths extensions, which are those keratin glue in ones, which thrashed my hair uh, for a couple years. I've worn extensions for about 13 years. And a lot of that damage is from wearing extensions. And then I can't stop wearing extensions because I feel like a tennis ball with three strings of hair coming out of it. I have it set that I'm supposed to get my extensions back in on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. We leave for Bali for our friend's wedding for two weeks next Monday. Next Monday, next Tuesday? One of those. So I'm trying to get some stuff done before I leave for you guys. Anyway, let's get into the review. I don't find uh, Zoeva's site directly the easiest to navigate because when I hit on shop and I go on the collections, if I find that I'm in the wrong collection and I wanna go back, I can't just hit the back button. I have to go back to shop, back to category, pick what I want. That's kind of a pain in the butt, um, but if you're familiar with shopping on like Cult Beauty and some other stores that I'll mention in a little bit, they're authorized retailers of Zoeva as well. I don't have any shipping information for you guys because they did send me this stuff, so I apologize for that. I'm going to link their um, customer service page below. And I just printed this out so I could read this to you. So you select for um, figuring out what your shipping is. Drop down, I, I picked United States obviously. And then it says standard delivery for international is $9 flat rate and the delivery time is four to 12 days um, or business days. And payment options, they take PayPal and credit card directly from their site again you'll just have to choose where it's going to and they can give you a shipping quote which that's actually not bad nine dollars and I'm pretty sure it comes DHL which DHL I love their international shipping I get stuff from like Dubai in four days which is amazing when I say stuff I mean like Huda Beauty stuff when I order <laughs> so you can purchase directly on the Zueva website or their authorized dealers are self ridges it is carried in Sephora Australia cult beauty which does free shipping at 50 pound order or more a place called bon Bonanza which I've never shopped from in Beauty Bay so those those are all, um, to the best of my understanding, there is no US retailer that sells any of these products. Some of you guys were telling me that you wanted me to get this review up before Zoeva came to Sephora. Um, there was a picture on Trend Mood that said in June and July that um, Zoeva would be coming to Sephora. That is actually for the Middle East. That is not in the US right now. So um, that's not on the horizon anytime soon that I'm aware of. I found the authorized users by just um, Googling Zoeva Cosmetics and finding where to purchase. A little background on the company from what I could find. Zoeva is a German-based company founded in 2008 by Zoe Boiku. I'm sure I'm butchering that because I butcher every name. I'll leave it down here in the screen. Name is composed of Zoe, 
Z-O-E, which is the Greek word for life, and Ava, which is the very first woman's name. So I remember hearing about Zoeva a couple years back when I was watching YouTube, and I had never tried anything because when I went to look at for them online at the time, it was only available directly on their website, which is shipping from Germany, and I was like, oh, that seems like way too much work. So I just never really tried anything. Then Zoeva randomly sent me this brush set and these three palettes that they have. They have this in a set too, where you can buy them all at once. I was super impressed with these brushes and these are from their Edition collection and this is the Rose Golden Luxury Set Volume 3. It actually comes in this really cute pouch too. In this brush set you get number 103 which is the Defined Buffer Brush and this is all synthetic Taclon hairs. I really like this for blending out underneath my eyes um, like, like when I put some um, more concealer on there I really like this brush. I've used these a ton. Um, the only bad thing is it gets a little smeared like fingerprints and stuff on the ferrule but I don't I don't mind that it's beautiful. Next this is my favorite way to paint my foundation on. I know that that may sound really weird, but the thing that's odd about this brush is it's like thicker, it's fatter in the middle here, and it kind of tapers out to the sides. And just the way I pick up foundation, it just paints it perfectly on, and then I blend out my foundation with a beauty blender, and that has been my favorite way to apply. And this is the 109. This is the face paint brush, and this is vegan as well. The next brush is their 114. This is the Lux. Lux Face Focus Brush. This one is made of goat hair. All of their products are cruelty free. Um, their makeup and these brushes, again, I know that there's a debate back and forth, but according to their website, they do not kill or harm any animals for the collection of the hair of their brush. They're either combed or shaved. So I'm just telling you what their site says. I know people will argue that keeping animals in captivity um, or using any part of them is not cruelty free, but again, I'm just telling you, uh, everybody has a different kind of spectrum, I think, sometimes on where their views may fall on that. The next brush is their 129 Luxe Fan Brush. This is white goat hair as well, and I like this to put on highlighter, but not as much as my Wayne Goss 15 brush, but still, that's nice. Then the 142 Concealer. This is awesome for my eye base, and this is good for concealer in the corner here, and if you just want a little piece of color or to blend around your nose, you can even use this if you like um, cream contour. I really like that brush as well. This brush is synthetic vegan Taclon as well. And then this brush is the 228. Um, I would kind of compare this, it's like a hybrid between a MAC 224 and a MAC 217 because this is white goat hair, so it's stiffer than the 224. Um, just the hair is, is denser. I do like this brush, but given the shape of it, I kind of like, um, a less dense brush to help do my transition color and things up here. So for me, this, um, doesn't have as much give, so it really gets in there and blends the shadow around, which is good to go in after I place my shadows sometimes and buff this in. Then we have the 234, which this is their Lux Smoky Shader Brush. This is white goat hair. Um, this is good to pack color all over the lid. And then the last brush is the 317 Winged Liner Brush. I love this brush so much. It does make doing a wing easy um, because there is a drastic slant in here. I actually really love it if you use brow pomades. This is great. And this is Synthetic Teclon again. So for this whole set, you get these eight brushes and ooh, slippery little sucker. So for this set, you get it in this bag with these eight brushes for $100. So if you factor that in, you can consider each brush to be $12.50 and you get a free tote bag. And this is a vegan, it's not real leather. All of them fit nicely in here and you have a lot of room if you wanna put even more things in there. I found an old brush guide, uh, it's a PDF, it's like 44 pages, so I was like, I was gonna print pieces of it off, and I was like, nope, not eating my printer paper or my ink. So I'm going to upload that on my OneDrive, just like I do for like the ordinary and everything, and I will put a link to it below. It does not cover the full spectrum of brushes that they have, but it may help you if you're trying to figure out what kind of brush you want, what they advise, application of product for, and different things like that. So I have to say, um, these are some of, I think these are my favorite, more 
affordable brushes. Um, I really like Real Techniques ones too, but I feel like these are really sturdy. I've washed these a ton. I've been using these for a while. Again, the only complaint I have about them is with the cream products and stuff, it'll get a little dingy, but that would happen with any cream products on any shiny ferrule that you had. These sets are nice. Um, typically, I don't like brush sets because I just want to buy the brush that I specifically want, unless it's Wayne Goss because now... I once I start feeding into an obsession of mine, I have to have every single brush that they have, even if I'm going to use it or not, because I'm completely ridiculous. I don't know why. I'll find a use for it in some way, shape, or form. But otherwise, I'm a firm believer, unless it's a huge discount, to just buy the brushes that you specifically need for the application that you want. Otherwise, you're gonna have a ton of brushes collecting dust in your cups. And believe it or not, the brushes I have behind me are my trimmed down brushes. I have a whole giant jar in my closet of brushes I've bought over the years that just don't work for me. Um, and I use them for things like Halloween makeup or when I do my friends Halloween makeups and stuff like zombie makeup and things. And I don't wanna ruin my good brushes. I have a whole range that's all like vegan brushes as well. I would urge you guys to get onto their website and go through their different categories and see which kind of brushes interest you because again, these are very well made and I'm not hesitant to recommend them. I will say their firmer white goat brush, it's not pokey, but it's not as soft as like a Hakuhodo. Um, I do think that this set, I like every brush that it has in here. Um, I like the foundation. I like them all. I think they're all good and I could utilize all of them. I'd be curious to try some more of just their eye sets. Um, that's on my list of things to pick up. So they sent me this, this is called Halo, and this is the oddest consistency. It's almost like a gelatinous pudding. And if you see right here, you'll see in my swatches where I like dug my nail into it and then it it goes back. It like that nail mark that I just made in there will be completely gone by the end of this review, which is very strange. Um, I'll show you the up close of it so you could see. This is nice if you want like a nice dewy, like if you're not really wearing a lot of foundation and you just want to wear a nice dewy um finish, tap this on with your finger or a light brush or go over it with a beauty blender. Um, I like to put this on and then put a highlighter on top, but this isn't particularly my favorite product um, for when it comes to like a liquid jelly highlight. I think that there are things a little more intense. This is nice if you want a bit more natural, but I wouldn't recommend this just because it's not my favorite. I do have to do their liquid lipsticks. Um, they have something called the Pure Lip Lacquer, and then they also have one called the Pure Velour Lips. Now, I'm gonna have to try these. I actually have been slacking, and I know I need to do a liquid lipstick review. So, you guys, come back if you're interested in that, and I will try both of those to let you know where they rank, but otherwise, I can't give you any feedback because I have not honestly tried them yet. Okay, now let's get into some of their makeup products. When I went up to Seattle for work, um, I got to meet up with Ripley and I bought, I'll have to show you a picture if I took it, like a whole chunk of this Esom carry-on bag that had so much makeup in it. And Keegan's like, aren't you just going for like a little bit? Why are you taking so much makeup? I'm like, cause Ripley's gonna swatch it for me. So thank her, thank her for that. I did forget to bring this cream contour palette that I'm about to show you. And there were a couple other things that I've gotten after that that Ripley was not able to swatch. So I apologize for that. I'm gonna leave all the swatches until the end of this, um, just so I can give you my thoughts on it. And that way you guys can fast forward. Uh, um, so for each palette below, I will put a timestamp below if you wanna skip ahead to those swatches, cause I'm gonna talk about the palettes, then do the swatches. So this is their Cream Contour Spectrum. I love this color up here. This is CM010. Um, these are thicker though. They're not as creamy as like my OCC John Doe pigment or cream contour that I like. These have a bit more drag to them. They're a bit more waxy feeling. What I like this for though, is that when I put this on and then I blend it up, it's not going anywhere. It's not sliding all over my face because it's too creamy and I really do like that. Um, this is really, I could use this color too, and maybe a little bit to bronze. This is way too yellow for me. This is way too yellow and I don't use this. So I do like this contour book. Again though, I don't think it's worth it for anybody unless you're a makeup artist and you can utilize all these colors. Like, I don't know anybody that would be able to use all three of these to contour and cream highlight. This is a good value though for the amount of product you get and the cost. So I do like this product. 
I think this would be best for those people that have really oily skin because thicker creams work best besides trying to drag them along your face. I've actually been reaching for that every single day I've done my contour. I'm just lightly on the back here and I just flick it up. It looks natural, it's not too heavy. It's that perfect kind of cool undertone. Next were these three palettes in one of their boxes that I will have linked below. So let's start with the lightest one. This one is Blanc Fusion. Now, what I'll tell you about these eyeshadows, they're all made in Italy and their entire line, I think I already said it, is cruelty free. So these shadows have like a very dry feeling to them when you swatch them. And some of the colors go nowhere. Like some of these, like this travel inspired enjoy in a box. Some of these are so light, even on me, I can't imagine really who they work for that I would need two colors that were kind of similar in their color payout. Their metallics are nice, but again, it's pretty easy to make proper metallics. Um, this palette I like the least out of the three of these that I will show you. Bloomer is a gorgeous color, but overall I wouldn't recommend this palette because it just doesn't speak to me. And again, I feel like these colors down here are kind of a miss. That Blanc Fusion palette did not work well for Ripley. You'll be able to see it in the swatches here. Next is the Coco Blend palette. So this palette is starting to get more along the lines of what I like. I like this pure ganache. I like warm notes. I do like this palette, but again, I find that I only like a few of the colors. Um, and overall, I mean, I think the shadows are good, but if you have some like mid-tone and lighter browns, I think that this might be a bit redundant for you, even though I like this color. This one is my favorite out of the three. Can you guys figure out why? Because it has those orange and uh, metallic purples and kind of like a lighter berry color. I really, really like this one. Out of all of the ones, this is one that I reach for the most. This liquid center is really nice. This 182 degrees Celsius is nice. Star Soft, Alchemy, Aftertaste. Um, again, these products, they don't swatch the best. Um, I notice when I kind of pick up the mattes and rub them on. So for the Sweet Glamour, they released two palettes. They have this one, that's the eyeshadows, and then they have, and they have the blush and highlight palette. I don't like this palette. Um, there's a couple colors in here that are decent, but in general, I don't really care for really light pastels. I'm fairly light anyway. Um, I just feel like it doesn't give me, I just don't really know anybody that pastels look good on. Like I have the Pastel Goth palette and I really like that by Kat Von D. I wouldn't put this in the same running as these. A lot of these are extremely chalky. This whole palette looked like chalky crap on Ripley. So for any of my people of color, I would not purchase this. Um, I wouldn't purchase this at all. And then their blush palette. I find these blushes to be extremely dry and chalky and this highlighter is actually really pretty if you're um, light and fair because it is white. You'll see again in the swatches. These blushes, none of this really showed up on Ripley again at all. So I would actually skip that because you can get other things that are like that. Next is their strobe spectrum. So in the sp strobe spectrum, you got spring, summer, and winter. Some of these are really duochrome and I actually really like these. So right now on my cheek, I am wearing actually I'm wearing the summer kit I have on this peachy color right here which actually looks like it'd be dark in the in the pan but it's actually really light um, and I do like that is it my favorite highlighter formula no but these are nice and smooth there's absolutely no glitter to these so you can just figure out by the swatches which one you like the best um, all of these have numbers they don't have names on them so this one is the summer this one is the winter and this one is the spring. This spring one is extremely similar to the Kat Von D Alchemist palette, which um, three of these shades anyway, this yellow one didn't have one. I'll show you um, against the two in the swatches. These are um, more powdery than those ones though. If you can tell up close in the swatches, the other one goes on kind of like just an iridescent color. This one you can tell has a white base with the iridescent shift to them. They are extremely similar though, and this is a great value again over that cost but you do have to factor in if you are ordering so many things and you have to pay international shipping and waiting if that feeds into your decision next is probably one of my favorite products from them this is their matte spectrum pressed powder you get these 15 shades and I will show you again while I was doing swatches some of this almost like sheets off like sheetrock 
Like it kind of comes off in these like glacier like chunks, which is kind of odd. I like the oranges in here um, and the berries and peaches. I can do some really cool looks with this. These colors down here, these like blue and greens, they're actually super pigmented and I really do like this. I think this is a great value. It is $40, but you are getting 15 shades. This is where I start to feel torn. I don't like to recommend every single thing that's just mediocre or decent because it's like, you guys don't need decent mediocre. I want you guys to have what I perceive to be the best. Again, that's all based on opinion. So something I love, people have sometimes told me they hate. And I'm like, you're crazy. But okay, so this palette is $40. And while you get such a nice range of colors in here to do a lot of looks, would I say that I would rather have this over another $40 palette or one that's slightly more expensive like my Modern Renaissance? No, I would rather have that for the $5 more. But again, you're getting a lot of colors in here so you just kind of have to decide and it is a good way to get a nice mix of colors that do perform well. And then the last two things I got from them are this new, um, the Basic Moments eyeshadow palette and then the Basic Moments blush palette. In the eyeshadow palette, you get these 10 shades. These are all mattes and these are all metallics. And then in the cheek palette, you get a blush, a bronzer, and a highlight. This is actually really nice. If you're fair, you can use this or light. Otherwise, that's not really gonna show up. This highlighter looks like it'd be really dark, but it's actually quite gorgeous on the skin. And this unfinished is a really pretty bronzer so I would recommend this one this one I wouldn't I have this on my eyes today I have here to stay um, then I went in with like never ending I tried to blend that up a little and then this new era on the outside and then I put unfinished this gold all over my lid and I highlighted my brow bone with make it last and then the inner corner with yet to come. I feel like a lot of these colors are extremely similar once you put them on and they are rather dry and chalky. Uh, not my favorite, so I would skip on this. So right now on the screen, guys, I'm going to show you cost comparisons. I filled in all the products that I have from them, so I'll show you that on its own sheet. I also went and filled that in into my eyeshadow palette list so you can kind of see where these rank. They are extremely affordable compared to other brands for the amount that you get and the cost. I went over the ingredients on these and I can't find anything similar to them. These do have um, on average a 36 month shelf life, which is nice for some of the powders. All do contain talc. If you're sensitive to that, I would skip. Now let's get into some swatches. I'm going to do it in my standard fashion. Any of the face products, obviously, I mean, excluding eyes, if it's highlighter or blush, I just finger swatched it. And then with the highlighters, I blended them out on my hand with my ABH A23 brush. Those do not have a base. Okay guys, let's get into some swatches now. I will be swatching in my typical fashion. I will be laying down a base of Urban Decay's Primer Potion. I will be swatching the shimmer shades with my MAC 242 brush, and I will be swatching the mattes with my MAC 239 brush. In between swatches, I will be cleaning my brush in my color switch so my brush will not be damp. As always, the first swatch will be a finger swatch, and the one right next to it will be a brush swatch, just so you can see the difference in performance. Open eye, feel the waves cut through me, hypnotized by the sounds I'm breathing in. Hold tight, hold tight, chemicals collide. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. Dripping lights, paint the skies, all because of you.
So this is what I would get out of all the stuff I just showed you. I get some brushes from them because I really like it. I would get their cream contour spectrum because even though I won't use all the colors, it's so hard for me to find a contour shade and cream that I like and I really do like that top shade. I would get the matte spectrum because you do get a nice mix of colors that you can create a lot of looks and I lo I prefer all matte shadows typically. I would get their summer strobe because it's the highlight that I'm wearing on my cheeks right now and I like it and believe it or not you'll see in the swatches all but this last shade actually worked on my skin tone once I blended them out so um, I really do like that one. I believe that's the only highlighter that worked for Ripley out of all of these. This one I really like. This is their spring spectrum. Um, this is just like the alchemy palette find that to be more smooth than the Moonchild palette by ABH. I would get the Caramel palette because I really do like these colors. I would get the Basic Moments blush palette if these tones would work for you because this is really nice and that highlight is gorgeous. And the other stuff um, like this stuff right here I would kind of leave behind and if you do like I mean the colors in here if you like them that's nice. I just found when I work with more of the colors sometimes I'm like they look the same like some of them kind of repeat a little bit on the lighter shades anyway like in this one I feel like at least two of these are very similar these two have very little color payout this was my least favorite I hope to have a couple more videos up or at least scheduled for when I'm gone because I don't think that I'll really have internet access I'm gonna try not to be glued to my phone much I am gonna try to vlog um, some bits so I have some memories myself too but I'm not that like douche with a camera in everybody's face constantly I'm my own kind of douche. So I hope you guys found this review helpful. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you next time.